Why is this person still alive? How does she fall off a mountain and come back without breaking any bones? How is she, you know what I mean? Like, how, why? Like, What's up Sunday fans? Welcome back to another video. My name is Flip and I just got it. Let me take this off. Um, it's hard to talk in one of those masks, but I just got new merch in the Sunday store. Check it out on Teespring. Link will be in the description below. But uh, that's how I'm going to be representing Chinese dramas, especially the Untamed. We've got new Wei Wuxian and Lang Renji face masks. And so protect yourself when you're out there in this current environment and represent Chinese drama. We're on this journey on watching as many dramas as possible and I think I'm watching about five or six dramas at the same time and sometimes I just finished The Song of Glory and this is my final review. Were you like me impatiently waiting for subtitles to come out or were you like me being really really annoyed by the annoying plot holes of this show? And were you also like me where you thoroughly enjoyed this drama? The Song of Glory, I'm gonna do a new segment starting in this video called The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. 53 episodes, I got through it. Did you? Like, obviously, if you are here, obviously we've seen The Song of Glory. Some of us are big fans of it, some of us love it, some of us hate it, but overall, I think for the most part, we thoroughly enjoyed the drama. Let's start off with the good. From the very beginning, the drama started off in an amazing way. It was fast paced, relentless, furious, death defying, and there was tons of action. The drama kind of introduced you to the story in a very simple manner. There's the good guy, there's the bad guy, and then there's Shen Li Ge, who is this badass orphan assassin, and that was it. It didn't overwhelm you with too many characters and a plot point or a story that was too confusing or too much to handle at the same time. Introduce you to the characters that were most important to the story, Shen Li Ge, the crown prince, and the bad guy, Lu Yuan. And it was just so intriguing because it left me from one cliffhanger to the next and I couldn't wait to watch the next episodes. So from the very beginning, it was very simple to follow, simple characters, simple story, simple plot lines. And it was intriguing enough for, for me to follow along. And what made it so compelling is that the back and forth battle between the bad guy Lu Yuan and the good guys, uh, Shen Li Ge and the Crown Prince. And Li Chen is absolutely beautiful in this show. I loved her charisma and I loved the way she portrayed the character. And Chin Hao was pretty good too. Like not what I would have expected. His mannerisms and his nuances aren't something that I typically expect for a Chinese drama like this. Um, I guess he's new to the period costume dramas. Um, but I did like his performance in Bad Kids and I thought his performance for this drama was was pretty good. It was okay, but I was most impressed with Lee Chin's performance and The way she carried the show. I mean she really did like it was all Lee Chin all the way But the way the show kind of created this cliffhanger type of approach was really intriguing You know, I couldn't wait for the next episodes to show up. I found myself like I said in my last video, I found myself watching the episodes without subtitles and then I just had to like, you know, stop doing that because <laughs> I need subtitles. Like I'm sure many of you guys need subtitles to enjoy this story and for the most part, that is a good thing. Like I think when a story is simple enough for you to kind of devote your investment and give your investment to watch it for the long run. Um, I think it's important for it to keep you intrigued and uh, paying attention to what the next episode is going to come. And uh, that's one of the best parts about this show. Now let's talk about the bad. It's 53 episodes, right? There's no way that they can keep that type of momentum from the very beginning all the way to the end, keep the excitement going as much as possible. And so when it started to slow down, you were introduced to more characters, the story started to get muddled and the plot holes just started to emerge and 
and we're willing to forgive that, right? Because we are anticipating the main storyline to continue after these filler type episodes. And so when that is happening, it's kind of forgivable, right? Like, I think for me, like when I watch these episodes and it starts to slow down and it starts to get a little too muddy in terms of the story and there's some plot holes, I can forgive that. Um, and that's totally fine. But that is something that I think Chinese dramas in general are going to have to deal with because there are so many episodes, 53, how can you keep that excitement going for all 53 episodes? There's gonna be some downsides to them. And then our central characters started to get dumb. And I guess we can forgive that as well. But, you know, it started to get a little bit annoying. You know, the smartest assassins, like, there were some parts where they seemed so smart, and then there were some parts where they just seemed so dumb. And then the characters just kind of felt like they were inconsistent. Now the downright ugly. I mean, I mean, there's not much of the bad and there's not much of the ugly, but the ugly is super, super ugly. It's it's probably one of the most annoying thing in this show. Um, there is a secondary character, her name is Shin Li Chin, and man, like the plot armor for this character was so thick, it was impenetrable. But she literally was the most annoying character. And when I say the most annoying character, I would probably say that the character was well done in a way that it really made you angry inside and that could be interpreted in a good way and that could be interpreted in a bad way and for me it was just like why is this person still alive how does she fall off a mountain and come back without breaking any bones how is she <laughs> you know what i mean like how why like <sighs> like what is happening and then there was this big bad villain at the end that I just did not care about. I mean, he was introduced throughout the entire show as like the evil man lurking in the shadows, but there just wasn't enough character development for me to care about him. And then the show finally reached its final few episodes and it wasn't that big of a plot twist, to be honest. And then when that happened, it was like two episodes and it was over. Yes, the big bad villain was lurking in the shadows, but um, there wasn't enough screen time and there wasn't enough story development for me to really give a shit. It wasn't perfect. None of these dramas are perfect. Um, and so I would give The Song of Glory a B. That's it for me, guys. Thank you so much for stopping by. Leave your comments in the section below. What did you think of The Song of Glory? Did you find yourself in the same situations as me? You know, loving most of it, hating some of it, and downright just confused by some of the plot holes and some of the character developments that uh, happened. Don't forget to check out new merch. Uh, Wei Wushan and Lang Wenji masks and t-shirts and mugs in our Watching Sunday store. Link will be in the description below. But guys, thank you so much for stopping by. And if you like the video, leave us a like, leave your comments in the section below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for being part of our small and humble community. And once again, I will see you next time.